happy 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 wednesday if you are doing good can you give me a 10 in the chat real quick so we can get a little bit of conversation going up there we have a good session in store for you today we have your truly favorite edsel who is the teacher of all teachers in the free jet world the instructor of all instructors or the coaches of all coaches Bob, and he's going to be bringing you guys a, a lesson today focused on rip settings how many of you feel like you're like a real expert when it comes to rip settings Probably very few, right? I mean, not very many people truly, truly deeply understand that part of the product. But guess what? Spoiler alert, it is a huge part of the printing process. And in order to get the best quality prints that you possibly can, it is, I don't know, I'd say at least a top three things that you really need to, to get right uh, in order to make that graphic come to live. Uh, and so today we are going to go for 30 minutes. Um, Edsel's going to walk us through. Edsel, I'd say, man, okay. at, at 45 after, let's go ahead and cut it because there's going to be a lot of questions and we need to get ample time. And then we're going to finish this thing at the top of the hour, sharp and crispy. Cool. So Edsel, it is all you. Um, and if you have questions, please do put them in the Q and A um, or put them in the chat, or I'm going to plan on, I'm going to plan on uh, tagging people in live here too. So you uh, definitely feel free to click the little raise hand button at the top of your screen. And I'm going to be bringing people in here live. Um, and so I hope you guys all have a great session. Please take notes. Please take notes. And um, at the end of this, I got a couple of updates for you. I'm not going to, I'm not trying to do anything salesy. I just have a couple of important updates for you at the end of this that I need all of you to know. So Edsel, uh, take it away. Cool. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I prepared a couple of things here for you guys to help you out and uh, present a little bit of the settings. So uh, we get a lot of, you know, what I consider very easy, very basic questions to very basic settings, you know, and I think sometimes uh, they just need a better explanation of what this does, what this environment does, when I should use this. And of course, a couple of extra situations and a lot of requests that I've gotten to get, you know, a better wider underbase or more color, etc. So the first one we're going to talk about is just the environment real quick. Black cotton. And you can see on there, I, I put it says uh, black cotton or it says black media. The reason it says media is because we have a, uh, the 330TX don't say cotton. They actually will say um, just media because they're not, you know, you're not able to do different fabrics with that. So black cotton media is to be used on a black shirt. Very straightforward, very easy. This environment will not print any black areas of the image. It will leave it black and let the black fabric show through so very easy you know it basically all it's going to do is it's not going to print any black ink you know all that areas that are supposed to be black it's just going to leave the shirt the black shirt there to show through and uh, that's going to create the black area you know the black image of uh, the black area of your image so why is it beneficial one it saves you ink obviously now we're not spraying black ink into a black shirt so we automatically eliminate some of that cost and now it's going to start to save us ink. Also, black on black sometimes doesn't look that good. You know, um, although sometimes you may want to print black on black, uh, it doesn't look as natural. It doesn't look, it may look a little bit muddy, you know, and it may be a noticeable shade difference between the black ink and the black fabric right next to it. So preference to you guys, if you guys want to print black ink into it, uh, you can't. You know, I personally like to save that extra cost and uh, I just won't add the black to my black shirt. So pretty straightforward, black, black environment will just be used for black shirts. And it says black con, but the same rule goes for black poly uh, as well for those of you that are using the, the plus. Uh, our dark cotton media environment. So what the difference between dark environment and the black environment is the dark environment prints the black ink. So that's really the only difference is one prints black, the other one doesn't. The next question I get asked about this is what colors are considered a dark garment? And that's sort of like a trick question. You know, the color of the garment will not be the final decision we use whether or not we're going to use dark environment. It's the image which is going to decide the fact of whether I'm going to use dark or uh, even a white uh, con environment. So. And the next question is, you know, does this print require white ink? So that is the determining factor of whether you're going to use dark cotton on this type of shirt. You know, so is, does your image require white ink? 
does your image have white letters in it? Does your image have, you know, it, parts of the image that make it up that are white? You know, this is where you have to determine, do I need white ink? Because the next question I, I get asked is, uh, well, what about a yellow shirt? A yellow shirt is not a dark color, right? Or even a light baby blue shirt. You know, these really, really light colors that you're wondering, well, it's not a dark color. What environment do I use? And again, it's not really based on your, your garment. It's going to be based on the image you use. Does it require white ink for you to, to print this image? And I have a quick example on the next, uh, on the next slide. So on the left, you can see at, at the, what it would look like as a dark cotton or poly shirt. So even though this yellow shirt is not a dark color, my image requires white ink. If you notice the letters on the top, it says cheetah, those are white. There's little highlights of white inside the diamond. Uh, there's some white letters in the bottom left where it says Omniprint. Because of this, these, you know, these areas where I need white ink, I now have to treat this yellow shirt as a dark garment. So what that means is I have to spray dark pretreatment and I'll have to use uh, the dark environment in order for me to get a white layer. Now, if I didn't print that white layer, uh, you'll look at the image here on the right, and as you see, I mean, I basically just printed a CMYK layer over that, and now there's no white ink, there's no white areas, and again, I need that white ink. This isn't a dark shirt, but I'm going to treat it as a dark shirt just because I need the white ink. So again, it's, at the end, it's not really a necessary, you know, determining factor on your shirt. If the shirt is really, really dark, black, uh, navy, those obviously are, are pretty, pretty obvious. You're going to have to use the dark environment. But I get a lot of the questions once you start going into the lighter shirts, you know, the ones that are, I guess are not considered the dark garment. People are wondering, do I have to use white ink or, you know, which environment to use? So generally, if you're going to use white ink on any color shirt uh, that's not black or white or uh, black or white, you're going to be using dark uh, the dark media, dark media, dark cotton. Same rule goes for uh, polyester. If you have a yellow polyester shirt, you're going to be using dark poly environment. So again, that's the determining factor is, are you going to be using white ink? If you're going to be using white ink, it doesn't matter if it's a baby blue shirt, a yellow one, you know, a really light shade. That white ink requires you to treat it as a dark garment. So that's the first one there. And I get a lot of questions on those. I'm sure a lot of those pop up with, you know, whether or not we're going to use it. Uh, this next one is for uh, the 330TX users. Uh, so if you have a plus, uh, you may not see this option unless you have all the environments in there. But for those of you using the 330TX, you will notice you have an extra environment labeled color medium. So besides black, besides dark, uh, besides your white environment, there'll be one that's called colored uh, media. And I get a lot of questions about this. This environment is an old way of printing. Before our rip was improved to save you ink, both the dark and the black environment will print a grayscale environment. This grayscale environment saves you ink and keeps a, a softer feel to the print. Uh, now using the color environment will create a solid white underbase layer. While this sounds good, there are various cons to this. So whenever you print a white underbase, whether you're using dark or black cotton or media, any of those, you'll notice that your white underbase looks like a grayscale image. You know, there's areas where there's more white ink, there's areas where there's less white ink. Uh, the reason we do this is uh, for when it saves you ink, gives you a softer feel, and under certain colors, you don't need that much white, right? So it saves you a lot of it. This environment that's called colored media ignores basically that whole rule and just lays down a solid white silhouette of whatever you're printing. Now, again, this is only for the TX users. So you're going to have seen this and I'll give you a little preview of how that would look on this next slide. So your normal underbase is the one on the left. If I printed this image right now, this is what you would get. You know, you'd get that sort of gray tone, gray scale type of underbase. And if you use this environment called color media, if you look at the one on the right, uh, it's just a huge, huge, you know, blob of white ink. Now, the cons of this stuff is 
it creates a very thick feel to the print. You know, that grayscale version is dialed back a bit to a certain point, so it gives you a nice feel and it gives you a nice cost. When you use a solid, solid white underbase, you get this huge, thick uh, white base, uh, which now feels very heavy on the shirt. Uh, your ink cost is gonna go up quite a bit. You know, the shirt that costs you two bucks to print is not gonna be $4 to print, you know, $5 to print. So, and higher risk of white ink and the color bleeding. You know, sometimes we get reports of this happening. There's so much white ink underneath there that it bleeds right through. Now, again, if you have a plus, you may have never even uh, have seen this environment. For those of you that do have the TX, uh, you'll see that it's actually under the regular TX environment and it says a uh, color, color media right there. We eliminated this for the plus just because um, it just would give you bad results, uh, especially if you have bad shirts, especially if you didn't know how to preach you very well. Um, this setting, you know, can give you uh, some negative results, but it also it, once you learn and master all those little steps, it can also be a good environment. So I generally do not use it just because it's it consumes a lot of white ink and it also uh, feels very thick on your shirt and you, know, you want to avoid uh, that nasty feel on there. But that's basically your preview right there. Uh, grayscale is what we're getting now, which is good. It gives you a nice soft feel and it saves you ink. The other one here is this really, really solid thick base that you get out of it. So again, that's only for the TX users. I get that one uh, that pops in a lot, a lot for the questions. Uh, the next one is our production environment. I'm sure you've seen there's quality environments and then right underneath there's production environments. So what are they used for? They're used to print faster and produce more per hour. It's obviously in the name production. Uh, how does it print faster? So while the white layer prints the same as the other environments, the color is set at a slightly lower resolution, which allows a faster pass. So the fat, what makes it faster is we lower the resolution down a little bit on the color layer. And if you, if you ever use those, you'll notice that when it's printing the color, it does a much bigger jump, much bigger jump, much faster print uh, than the normal quality setting. Uh, when should I use it? You know, works great for various images. Higher detail images though, I recommend using the quality mode setting, but it, this setting works great, you know, for, for basically almost all images. Uh, since a lower resolution is being used for the color layer, it's important that your nozzle check is 100% to avoid seeing banding. So now since we're going at a lower resolution, you want to make sure you get a good nozzle check. You know, when you go at a much higher, higher resolution, it's a little bit more lenient, you know, if you're missing one or two or three little nozzles here and there. But as you go lower in resolution, you need to make sure your nozzles are firing uh, very well. So that's one thing when you're using production, just make sure those nozzles are firing really good. Curate box setting. I get a lot of questions about, you know, some of the settings that are popping here. They're very easy to, to understand though. So uh, number one, it says import as original size. So whenever you import an image, pops up in here and it brings it up as whatever size you saved it in Photoshop or whatever program you use. It brings it up as the original here, 10 by 10. Um, the next one up here, which I never use is it basically explodes your image so that it's edge to edge on your platen. Uh, the problem with this is that it ignores uh, the proportion size proportions. And if you click on it, you'll see that it just overstretches your image, you know, now it's all stretched out. It looks ugly. You know, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but that's what that setting does there. The last one here is going to be our custom settings. So if I want to punch in my own numbers, the customer said I need it to be three inches. Uh, this is where I'm able to just punch in that number. Now, when you start punching in numbers, make sure this little lock is checked because that locks the proportions of your image. So now when you adjust, let's say the width to six, it'll automatically adjust the height for that size. So there it is, adjusted the height. And if I go to 10, it'll adjust the height for me automatically. That's just to avoid that stretching right there. So, and our print position, for those of you that have already been printing, this is basically how we center our image or position our image where we want it to be. Make sure you do not confuse this with the other grid that is under our print setup. This grid and this grid are completely different settings. So 
This one right here under plant placement, don't touch. Leave it there. You, you always want to leave it at custom. Uh, but people will confuse that all the time. Uh, then a couple options down here, mirror the image. For those of you that have been using the, uh, the DTF packages or DTF option, that's when we're using mirror image uh, button. And then we also have an invert image, uh, which I really, same thing, have never really used, but it'll just invert uh, these colors around for you. So again, not really a feature uh, we'll, we'll be using too much. So our highlight setting, next gonna be our highlight setting. I like setting a lot of questions on this. Uh, what does the highlight do? And what does it do? Our highlight setting uh, will spray a second layer of white ink over visible white areas. So uh, going back to, you know, our image here, you know, the high, what we consider a highlight in this image would be the white visible areas. So let's say the, all the words that are cheetah, uh, these little letters down here is white. Uh, all the whites in this diamond are considered a highlight. Anything that's visible uh, in your image that's white is considered uh, a highlight, what we call a highlight. Um, and what it does is it'll, it prints white over those areas again during your color pass, right? So then what that does really is it gives those white visible areas more of a pop, more of a solid look to them because now it's going over it again even though it, it sprayed some white ink under the white base when it comes back to do the color it's going to spray color and it's going to spray white again over those areas so again it just makes those white highlights pop a little bit more um, on there so and, and then when would you use it pretty much anytime you're using dark or the black environment and you see it says it's disabled for white cotton and white poly and anything else a white media since we're not using any white ink uh it won't let you click you know this uh it won't let you do highlights under those settings uh then what is the best setting so people ask me what is the, what's my best setting this is basically the setting i use at home uh whenever i'm printing images my fuzziness will be set to 15. my highlight percentage 70 to 80 is what i like to do and i'll kind of show you here my normally black cotton is at 60. 60 is a nice you know little uh, layer that it, it kicks in there for you i generally will go anywhere from between 70 all the way up to 80 but i won't go past 80. i think um, once you start going past 80 you risk getting uh, some bleeding from your white over uh, to your colors so i uh, try to go past 80 but i think once you're around 80 you'll notice a pretty significant kick uh, in those white areas uh, the next one is on the fly this is basically how you turn it on and off you know you want it on the fly if you ever want to turn it off you'll see none uh, but on the fly is the default one and that's where you want to keep it at and then fuzziness i keep it at 15 uh, right here to get us, you know, a nice uh, coverage on those, you know, white, white areas. So, you know, on, uh, 80 on the fly, and then I keep it at 15. And I think you will notice a pretty good significant kick in those white highlights. So, and again, I wrote here real quick, well, what are the considered those white highlights? Again, it's just visible white areas uh, in your image. Pretty, uh, sometimes you may not even have a white highlight. You know, sometimes you may not have any white uh, visible areas in your actual image. So color strength setting. So color strength is a setting we will use to increase the color saturation or decrease it. Uh, this setting is only controls the color layer and will not affect the white underbase. So I, I hear that comment a lot uh, where they try to increase this color you know, strength option to try to increase the white, but it doesn't actually affect the white at all, the white underbase. So color strength is just going to be our uh, color layer, our, our CMYK. So when should I use this? Uh, if you notice that overall print needs the color saturated further, you can start increasing this value to further saturate the color. Uh, so again, if you notice things are muted, you, you want that red to pop a little bit more, you want things to be a little more vivid. So, you know, when, uh, what is the best setting? You know, uh, people ask me where, where it should be set at. You know, this is uh, very depending on the garment, you know, or the image, but all the environments have a good starting point. You notice if you go through dark, if you go through black poly, you go through all these, they're all set um, a little bit differently. And you'll be able to 
uh, make the adjustment from there, you know, on there. Now, those are all good, really good starting points, assuming you pre-treated good, assuming that you fired up the machine good, you got a nice shirt. Uh, but every person has a different process and that's when you know you may have to start adjusting some of these you know settings so it, it comes out good for your process uh, the next one i get a lot is the margins uh, margins are easy to set up you know below are some recommendations but the standard margin from the neckline is about two to three inches every printer has a different you know um, margin line that they set up some people use inches uh, a lot of screen printers use their fingers. They'll say, no, four fingers from the top, five, you know, things like that. Um, generally about two to three inches is what I like to set it to from the top. You obviously don't want your image printing too high up um, or too low, you know, on there as well. Same thing, especially when you're working on, you know, on the backs. Uh, but every printer will have a different standard, but generally two to three inches is what we usually recommend. Uh, always make sure your images do not have a negative space. Negative space will affect how the margins are set up. Uh, basically, you know, you don't want a whole bunch of blank space around your image. A, whole, a lot of this blank space around your image will affect how the margins are set up. Um, so make sure you do crop your images, uh, whether that's in Photoshop or in the RIP, uh, to avoid this type of problem. And I added uh, one that I get a lot of requests for, which is uh, how to set up, you know, your, your pocket, you know, your, your left chest print, um, kind of some margins, how to land there. There's some, I know some of you don't have the little small chest platen, uh, so you're kind of stuck with doing the pocket area print with the adult. Uh, and this is generally what I like to use if I'm using the adult, uh, about two and a half, three inches from the top. Uh, the print position is top right. And then my image size is about three to four inches. Now in the past I've spoke about, you know, these margins, uh, just keep in mind when you're doing a pocket that, you know, as you go bigger in size, the chest starts to get wider. But you know, you, you want to, you know, as you go through, um, and they're telling me like, you couldn't see the rip. Go back here, okay, there we go. Hopefully you guys see the rip there. And so I'll just go double check. Uh, so we'll do two and a half here real quick. And print preview it again. And just kind of shows you, you know, up in that area, uh, you start to hit that left chest uh, pocket area right there. So those are basically the settings I like to do. I'm about three and a half to four inches on my image. I'm about two and a half to three inches from the top. And then hit it top right uh, for that nice little pocket area. Money, my other chimichanga. Can you, you want to ask All right, and then let's go ahead and... <laughs> Who's eating chimichangas and how do I get some of that? Yeah, yeah. no, let's heat, up, let's heat up two of those. Come on. Oh, I'm not on mute. <laughs> how did you do that to me? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not about it, man. All right. Um, let's go ahead and get back to my slides. All right. So those are, those are the margin setups. Uh, one other thing with the margins is... Uh, if you look at the margin setup, there's little arrows that point up, left, right, etc. And just kind of keep in mind that when it's pointing up, it's telling you it's going to move it away from that area. Sometimes people see it pointing up, so they assume it's going to go up. Or they see it pointing down, they assume it's going to go down. Just keep in mind, you know, it, it's telling you it's going to move it away from those sides. So it can be, get a little confusing. Uh, white under base choke. Uh, this is another one. So... What is the white under base choke? Anytime you're using, um, anytime you're using the the dark or the black environment, you have to add what we call white under base choke. Uh, and it re basically, what it does is it reduces the size of the white under base by a couple pixels. One thing is that we have to make sure we're not confusing this with just our regular under base. Uh, this happens a lot. There's a there's a difference between your under base and your white underbase choke. When we just say underbase, we're just referring to the first layer of white ink that prints. Uh, whenever we're talking about white ink underbase choke, that's actually a setting we're applying to that first pass. So, and I'll explain what happens. So, when you print uh, white ink onto shirts, as it starts to dry, it can potentially expand. So, while that white underbase is sitting on your shirt, it can potentially actually grow, you know, and get bigger, you know, and the problem that that'll cause 
is it'll give you a white outline around your image, a little fine white line around your entire image that's not supposed to be there, right? And if you look at this image that I have here uh, on my screen, you can see the left side has the solid white red letters. That's how it should look. So, you know, it has these solid red letters right here. And if you notice that they're just solid, it's red from end to end. Uh, but if you look at the one on the right, you'll notice, you know, there's a white line going around the entire image. And you, some of you guys may have seen this before. Sometimes it's not as noticeable like this. Uh, sometimes it is. And that can easily be your wider on your base choke. And when you apply this choke setting, what it's doing is it grabs your under base and it reduces the size of it by a hairline or two, right? And then now when you print your color on top, we're able to hide all of that, uh, all that white under base out of there. So um, make sure you are applying this, you know, sometimes, it's very dependent on your environment, whether you're in a humid environment or you're not, you know, it, it could expand more than others, sometimes not at all. Uh, but to keep it safe, you want to add this, uh, this choke setting. Now, sometimes I've also have heard and people have told me that, that, you know, I thought it was automatic. I thought that, you know, that it got added on its own, but it doesn't, you know, so you have to make sure uh, that we do add it in there. So once you, set up your image. Once you uh, have all your settings down, one of the last things we're going to do is add the white under base choke, right? So, and again, all this has to be, this last step has to be done manually. So you hit this add white under base choke. This guy pops up. It defaults to two pixels. What that means is it's going to reduce the, the white base by two pixels, which is about two hairlines. You know, for those of you that know graphics, it's a very, very small, amount that it's really going to remove uh, and you but you're able to increase it so if you want to go up you know you're able to go up uh, don't go too high you definitely don't want to go too high i would say two is about 99 percent of the time what i use if i have to i'll go to three you know and just kind of based on your image if you need to go up higher uh, just don't go too high when you have fine lines and then so, I, so real quick we're going to go to image add white under base choke okay we weren't able to see that um, and then window pops up with the two pixels that I was referring to earlier. Uh, now, most of the time I just hit okay here. If you need to adjust it, you can go ahead and adjust it, go up three, uh, four, if you need to. Um, but don't go too high when you have fine lines, you know, you have to remember we're removing pixels. So if I have a small text, that's three pixels and I remove two pixels out of it. You can imagine that little line is not going to disappear. So just kind of keep that in mind um, if, as you start increasing this choke. And then we hit OK. It starts to apply it. And sometimes you may wonder, like, hey, well, did I apply it? Did I add it? I can't remember if I did. Uh, one of the ways we, we use that to verify, we go to View, and you hit Channel Palette, and you hit Show. And then now this channel palette pops up. And if you notice down at the bottom, I have a layer that says wider under base choke. So whenever I add the choke, this layer pops up and I'm able to uh, now know, okay, I did add it. You know, so that question pops up. Something I'm working so fast, I can't remember if I did add it or not. Uh, I can check this channels palette and this little layer right here pops up whenever I do have it on there. If I didn't add it, we are not going to have anything, you know, in here. So a couple of the ones that I get, how do I add more white ink to my underbase? Um, I get this question a lot. It happens a lot. And I'll try to get through this one. Might be my last one. Uh, with proper startup of the machine, proper preaching application, and good quality shirt, basically uh, you will never have to change it. But uh, below are some of the options, you know, to, to add it. So number one is going to be raising your resolution. Uh, raising the resolution will increase the ink output by printing smaller increments and doing multiple passes over those smaller increments. Uh, this will output more ink, but will slow down your printer. Uh, and to do that part, uh, I'll show you in my rip. Go back here so you guys are already watching it. Uh, we're going to go to print setup. We're going to go over to our properties window. Some of you guys may be familiar with this. 
we're gonna go to device options right here uh, first thing I want you guys to check is make sure you're under the white underbase if you notice here it says white underbase now I'm just controlling the white base all right and that's what we want uh, and then two spaces below you'll see it says resolution so you can click on that guy go to 2880 which is the next resolution up and then we're gonna hit OK we're gonna hit OK now this is too much ink you know if, if I have a hundred percent nozzle check um, and I went to 2880 right now to that resolution and I just started printing it's gonna be a lot of ink you know I mean it may be so much that when you pick up the shirt uh, it may drip down you know so with that being said I'm gonna dial it back just a bit uh, so that way I don't pump out too much you know but I'm still gonna pump out more than my normal setting right but I'm just dialing it back a little bit to avoid um, all that so normally my underbase you want your underbase at a hundred percent you know that's going to be up here on the top um, I'm actually going to move it down in this case this now that's because that resolution is just pumping out that much more uh, white ink you know it's pumping out that much more white ink that I it's going to be too much for me you know now so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start dialing it back and I would say start off around like 87 uh, 87 will still give you uh, way more white ink than the normal setting that we have um, and you know gives you a nice nice coverage now um, if you find you need less keep dialing it down how do you know you need less uh, you'll see ink puddling up you know on your print you'll actually see like the ink puddled it'd be glistening because there's so much on there uh, start dialing it back on there. You have to also remember, you have to also remember, you have to put your color layer on top. So you want this white base to be nice and dry. Uh, so that way you can put your color layer right on top again. So um, that's one that I think a lot of, um, for those of you that, you know, having issues with getting that nice white base, uh, in my opinion, it's, you know, something else, pre-treatment, sure, startup, etc. But a good workaround um, is just pumping out a little bit more of this ink. And I think um, you'll notice quite a difference uh, for those of you that have been struggling to get, you know, white base with the normal uh, settings. Try that out and I think um, it'll, it'll work pretty good. Um, besides that, just the other option we can do to add some white ink. And I think it'll be the last one that I'll show you guys uh, in a bit here is same exact position so if you go back to your setup properties device options uh, you have one down here that says dot size now that's actual the physical dot size that fires out of the printhead the printhead is able to fire a small dot a medium dot or even a bigger dot that pretty much pumps out more ink out of it and by default it's in sml which is small medium large it's basically doing a combination of all these based on your image in our profiles but you're able to click on it and just tell it to just fire the large drop size right and it's just going to pump out large which is going to be more ink now uh, do not combo 2880 with large that is going to be way too much so uh, if you're going to change it to large go to the default setting 1440 by 1440 because if you combo both of these it's going to be a lot you know that's when you're going to lift up the shirt and things are just going to drip you know down so if you're going to try the large drop size i recommend to use that under 1440 by 1440 if you want to try 2880 which is a higher resolution go back to sml go back to sml that way you're not pumping out a ridiculous amount um, of white ink now as you go up in resolution, remember, print time is going to increase. You know, you'll notice it's a little bit slower, uh, but it has to go a little bit slower to get, you know, that nice multiple coverage on there. So for those of you that are having issues with that, you know, with, with getting that nice white base, uh, try this out, see if it works better. In the end, I think, you know, we sh it's, like I said, it could be preaching, it could be other options. Now, this, uh, this option also works very well for those of you that have um, clogged white channels, <laughs> you know, so if ever you have something like that, um, this is a good little workaround to, to get you some coverage. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Uh, we'll save maybe some of the rest for another time.
All right. Party people. Do we like that? Is that good? Can you uh, let me know if you got value out of that by sending a chat? That like, was it, let me just be honest. Was it good? Was it bad? It's probably not bad. If you say bad, and you're, I know you're absolutely lying. Cause there's nothing that we do here is bad when it comes to this coaching. Um, what I want to do here is start taking in some, um, yeah, see, everybody got good value, Edsel. Everybody, everybody loves Edsel. Like, I'm beginning to think people love Edsel way more than they love me up here. And, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I get it. If that's the case, I get it. Uh, but let's take some questions. I want to take some questions. Who's got some questions? I know I know. there's a bunch of people here. Hampton's got one. If you want to come in live, click the little raise your hand thing down at the bottom, too. Let's get some people coming in. Let me look through some of these. Take a couple minutes here. Yeah, Edsel, you want to pick some off the chat? What is so someone said what is fuzziness? So uh I'll cover this one real quick. So when I'll share this, I'll share my screen so everyone can see where this is located. So the fuzziness is part of the highlight. So uh the reason we have this is it's basically a range of what it, what we consider for it to be white. Uh for example, if I go into this image here, the letters are obviously white. You know, in this in this image, are obviously white, white. But then, if you get closer and closer into, let's say, the neckline right here, you notice it's white, and then it goes into like a lighter shade or dark, slightly darker shade of it. As you increase the fuzziness, it now will consider these little shades to be white. And what it will do is it'll lay down white over this area. Uh, which you don't want because then you're, you're going to wash out some of those lighter tones, some of those lighter uh, shades in there. So it's basically the range of you're telling the, the rip, you know, the range of what it considers to be a true white. You know, as you increase higher and higher and higher, it's not going to start to lay down white over areas that are supposed to be uh, like a light, light gray or a light, light um, blue or something like that. So it's basically you're telling it what to consider to be uh, a white highlight. Um, Gracie, I saw you had your hand up, but you don't anymore. You want to come in and chat? Let's have a conversation. Um, nobody wants to come in and chat live with us, Edsel. I don't know. Is it, are we intimidating or what is it? Oh, there she is. Okay, Gracie, you're coming in. Go ahead and unmute yourself. You're good. I'm at work right now, so I can't really, you know, show the security area. Oh, no problem. Oh. Oh. Wow, what kind of security area? <laughs> is this like top secret or what? Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so my question is, um, I noticed, uh, well, he explained that with my white underbase that it comes out a bit grayish. I have the TX. So, um, I, now I understand that it's because I'm not using the color media or color mode. Um, so my next question is if it comes out too grayish, can I add a second underbase and how do I do that? Yeah. All right. So. I'll address a couple of the uh, couple of things I guess you said, you know, uh, the color media mode, try it out, try it out. And I think, you know, I personally don't like to use it too much because it does consume a lot of white ink, but it does uh, lay down a significant more amount. Um, and I guess depending on your process, that may be beneficial to you. Because, you know, I think in the end, some of the reasons why people don't get nice solid white bases is because pre-treatment, uh, proper startup of the machine, et cetera, things like that. Uh, but I, what I do want you to try is try that, try that color, uh, media that I had mentioned. And if not, I want you to try the, the dark or black media, whichever one you're using, but I want you to change it to that 2880 resolution. I want you to change it to that resolution change. So that way it still gives you that grayscale underbase. You know, you'll notice quite a, a difference in thickness once you go into color. You know, and in fact, I would say color media is kind of one of the ones that is my last option. Um, but again, if uh, if you're having a lot of issues with that white, try it out. I encourage you to try it out either way. Because uh, I always said, you know, beauty is not a beholder. You know, some people uh, love it, you know, based on these other issues they have. That That's a good workaround. Uh, some people don't like it at all, you know. So try it out, you know, try it on your own. Um, that way you can um, really see how much different you, you're going to see and verify you're okay with the feel, you know, things like that. But I think in the end, it's really pre-treatment, proper startup of the machine, you know, and good, good, uh, a good shirt. 
I have a second question, if that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, it's not with the RIP settings, but it's more with um, importing your photo, well, saving your designs. I use Photoshop and it always asks me, because I save it as a PNG, um, convert to sRGB and also the option for um, import or embed ICC profile. You don't necessarily have to embed the profile. Um, as far as it converting to RGB, if you're starting your, your design process in CMYK, you always have to convert to RGB because uh, PNGs can only be saved in RGB. So that's probably why it gives you that message uh, because now you're saving it as a PNG. So it's telling you, hey, well, if you're going to save it as PNG, um, you're going to have to convert it to RGB, you know, on there. So um, the thing with that is that I with Photoshop, it's it, the default is RGB unless you change it. And I always do RGB, RGB. So I'm confused when it asks me to convert to sRGB. You can go ahead and convert it. You really won't see that much to be honest with sRGB is the same thing. You know, it, you really won't see uh, a change. It's uh, when, you're com when you're converting from CMYK to RGB mm -hmm. or, you know, back and forth, you may see like a tone change gotcha. um, there. But um, besides that, yeah, sRGB, you'll be fine. You know, 100% right, fine with that. All thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gracie. Um, Melody. I'm going to have you uh, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey there. Hello. Um, I have, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Cool. Um, so I don't know if you guys talked about color boost. Um, specifically, like, how does that affect when you have an image that um, has a lot of darker shading, but when you take the color strength up, it makes it too dark. So how can you use, like, color boost to bring out, you know, the vibrant um, quality in the image. I guess if based on what you're trying to achieve, color booster may actually even um, further darken those areas. What color booster will do is it'll really boost up like the contrast of the images. Um, so some of the darker tones, some of the darker uh, shades is really what you'll get things to pop more in. Sometimes if uh, if you have a really muted image and you add that color boost, uh, it will look significantly dark, you know, um, saturated. But once you have a really, you know, a nice graphic and you're adding color boost, you're really just changing the contrast, you know, of the image. And which, you know, I guess in this case was what you're trying to avoid um, anyways. There is yeah. options to like brighten your image or, contra you know, add contrast to your image. Um, and it actually will give you a preview um, to it. And, you know, real quick, I'll just show you it's adjustment, you know, brightness and contrast. And then you're actually able to make some adjustments here um, in your image and, you know, not have to worry about, um, you know, going back to the rip and everything. So try, you know, those are some that you can try out. I personally, you know, will make adjustments in Photoshop first to, to do things like that. But you're right, you know, when you're adjusting color strength, it's adjusting everything overall, you know, and sometimes if you need to um, brighten it up a little bit in Photoshop. So one of the tricks that I do is I brighten it up a little bit in Photoshop. So that way, when I saturate things in the rip, uh, it doesn't over, you know, I, I don't go past it, you know, in there. So that's kind of a little yeah. trick that I do. You know, if you know Photoshop, bring it in there and just add a little bit of brightness to it. Um, and then now when you adjust that color strength, you really will get more uh, of the color side rather than the contrasted sides. Okay. Makes sense. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Melody. We're going to go through two quick ones. Two quick ones. We're going to do Eugene Martin and then Woody Sherwood. Um, so let's go ahead, Eugene. Hi. Um, actually, this is Akila Martin, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> so, oh, hi. Well, welcome. Hi. Hi. Fine. Thank you. So one of the um, things we struggle with um, is getting a good print on white um bl a black a all black image on white and vice versa a all white image on black we just wonder if you have any tips to that <laughs> then i have the short second question but all right white ink you know um if you're trying to get that solid base you know and, and it always goes back to you know because i think this is the number one thing is make sure you fire up your machine good 
you know, make sure that you're priming those whites, make sure you're going through that part of it, make sure you get a good nozzle check. Um, next is pre-treatment, you know, make sure you're applying, you know, um, enough, make sure you're applying a nice, even coat to it. Um, that way, you know, when the white lays down on there, you don't have to do multiple passes or you don't have to uh, raise the resolution like some of the options that I, you know, I showed you today. Uh, those are the, you know, the, the key ones, you know, and I've been to hundreds of customers, you know, for this company and other companies where, um, you know, I get there and it, it's basically the basic steps, you know, fire up the machine properly um, and get a nice base. Besides that, you know, um, try, try the, the, the tips that I did today. Uh, mm -hmm. that what that raising the resolution for the wider under base I think uh, you'll get a, a really nice uh, base for it uh, but again if you want it to come out faster and that same uh, quality we'll have to dig into figuring out if it's our pre-treat is it our way of firing up our machine our shirt etc uh, so that mm -hmm. way you don't have to go through you know, that or um, someone had asked earlier about adding actually I forgot to show this um, how to add two white layers of whiting mm -hmm. so you are able to add two white layers and I'll show that super quick. So you guys, some of you guys may have, may have asked oh, about that. So print setup, we'll go to properties next. Again, we're going back to the same window again, device options, make sure you're under white under base. And then mm -hmm. down here, you see it says layer count. It's at one. So if you want two, we can just hit two, hit okay, hit okay. Now it's going to send two white layers and then a color on top. So those are, you know, an extra option. My best thing is, you know, find out where, where the problem is happening, whether it's the printers, you know, firing up, whether it's the pretreatment, the shirt. Uh, I, I hate, you know, um, I, you know, although these are workarounds, uh, mm -hmm. they're workarounds that, you know, will cause, you know, will add more time to your printing, you know, things. So sometimes mm -hmm. you also have to think about that, you know, so um, let's, you know, try those out. But in the end, I want you to, you know, really figure out what the issue is, you know, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, that way you don't have to be slowing down the printer more or pumping out more white ink um, and you can be printing faster and more efficient. So try those options out that I, you know, I showed you today and then um, shoot me an email whenever, you know, and just so I can see the type of results you're getting. Um, as far as the black ink on a white shirt, uh, pre-treatment and if you're using a plus the white the white cotton yeah. is set to 65 percent um, color strength i like mm -hmm. to move it up to 80. basically on all my white shirts uh, i move it all the way up to 80. you know and i think you'll mm -hmm. notice you know a good kick but cmyk the black kink is only going to look nice and vivid if you have you know a good uh, pre-treatment layer on there you know also mm -hmm. look gray and muddy you know not very well Okay, perfect. All right. And my second part of my question is, is there a way to add multiple jobs to um, the rip instead of us having to go, you know, if it's different shirts to kind of run them back to that? You can build up a queue, you know, if you like. Um, like, for example, this image down here is already, you know, ripped. Say my next image is going to be this summer design. Uh, I can add it to the queue down here, you see how I just added it and I'm gonna hit print a rip. And now as that starts to rip it, and then now let's say the next job I'm gonna do is this guy. I can just hit the little plus sign. And again, this is all after I already added all my settings that I need to do to it. Uh, you hit the little plus sign, it adds it to the queue and now you can start ripping this one. And basically all those, as, after they're done ripping, they're completed jobs. So once they're done ripping, I can just go to right click print. And then boom, it sends it straight to the printer. Once this one's awesome. done, I, I can go to the next one, hit print, uh, hit next one, print. But when you close the rip, all that goes away. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Good. All right. Wonderful. One more, and then we're done. It's got to be quick, though, Woody. Told you to bring you in here. We're doing one more. Talking is permitted. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, um, so I got a logo that's got a white background, and when I add the transparency channel, it cuts the white out of the image as well. Is there an easy fix without going to software editing? Um, no, so you, uh, you know, when the feature that it gives you there, it's really just to remove a color completely out of it. Uh, it doesn't give you the option to like individually pick areas or the background or just that. So. Uh, it really works well just if you need to remove an entire color out of it. 
Uh, besides okay. that, you're gonna have to bring it into Photoshop to do your editing. Okay, thank you, sir. Cool. All righty. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, we are gonna sign it off. It is at the top of the hour here. I appreciate having you all here. I hope you guys all got great value out of this session. Um, as always, these sessions will be available for review at a later date. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week. Uh, and we will see you here next Wednesday, same time, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, delivering some more, more uh, great value for you. So until then, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye.